Hi everyone, welcome back to the Wisdom of Everything channel. In the previous episode, you learned about the intellectual habits. Habits that contribute to your intellectual intelligence and were subdivided into the consumption of new information, the retention of it, and the training and health of your brain and memory. If you haven't watched this episode yet, then click on the card at the top or just go to our channel and watch the full playlist of this video series. In this episode, you will learn more about the sixth category and letter of the word Swaripsi, namely the productive habits. The sixth letter in category of habits from the Swaripsi framework is the productive habits, which is one of the most desired habits as we live in a world where our output and performance mean a lot. We desire to be super efficient and be able to do massive work in less time. That is why we are usually triggered by advertisements that offer quick fixes and easy, step-by-step -step programs to achieve our goals in no time with the least amount of effort. But now, how can we become more productive? Well, productivity is also known as the effectiveness of productive effort and is usually measured in time to produce, the quantity of the output, and the quality of the produced output. Therefore, we can categorize the productive habits into these three types of habits. Habits that make us more time efficient. Habits that increase our quantity of output. And habits that improve our output quality. There are a lot of different habits and techniques that will help you become more productive, but if we look at how highly scalable businesses work, such as McDonald's, we can learn that a system of processes lies at the heart of every productive organization. And that's also what Jack DeLoza tells us, the founder of Australia's largest training institution for entrepreneurs, the Entourage. Jack DeLoza explains that, a path, a process, and people are the means to achieve a highly scalable business. And so, next to a path or clear vision, you need a system of processes and procedures. Working on a process, procedure, checklist, or methodology takes time and will sacrifice some productivity at first, but in the end, it will save you a lot of time and it will also enhance the quality of your output. For example, in the airline industry, pilots work their way through an extensive security checklist before they take off. Since the introduction of such checklists and procedures, the number of accidents has decreased dramatically. And as a result the quality of their service improved and the time lost on accidents decreased. Besides working on a process, a habit that is highly recommended to work on at the same time when creating a process is the habit of documenting the process. Why? Well first, it will make it easier for you to measure each step in the process instead of working it out in your head. And then optimize your process accordingly. And second, if you want to increase your output significantly in scale, you will need to invest in automation or a workforce that can follow your step-by-step -step documented process. And in both cases, documentation will help and save you time. Now, this last one brings us to the next step and type of habits, namely how to massively increase your output quantity. And so, to achieve this, we can basically do three things. The first thing considers our own time and labor. Hopefully the process saved us already some time, so we have more time left to produce. But, if we want to produce even more, we could increase the time we work on it by sacrificing the time spent on other things, such as social interactions, entertainment, social media, and so on. Therefore, it is useful to measure your time spent on all sorts of activities, so you can optimize your whole schedule and spot opportunities to save more precious time. The second thing we can consider is, working on automating parts of the process. Usually, it will help if you possess some nerdy technical superpowers to play with code and algorithms. But luckily, there are some tools on a mission to help the untechnical amongst us to realize somewhat the same. Tools such as IFTTT, or if this then that, and tools such as Zapier. If automation is not possible, then there is the third thing you can consider. And that is mastering the art of motivating and managing people. Be it a paid labor workforce, hiring freelancers or virtual assistants, or just outsourcing tasks to volunteers like your mother or little brother. 
And guess what, having a clear documented step-by-step -step process will make it easier to manage people. Finally, to increase the quality of the output, besides having a well-documented process or checklist, we should build some experience by going through the process as many times we can. Because the more we do it, the better we will become, and the higher the quality will be. So, what have you learned so far? Well, you saw that productivity means the effectiveness of productive effort, and is measured in time to produce, the quantity of the output, and the quality of the produced output. And so, to increase your productivity, you should work on habits that improve these three variables. Such as developing a well-documented system of processes, which you try to automate wherever you can, and else, outsource the tasks by managing people. Besides this, there are of course many more useful habits, such as eliminating distractions to increase your focus, goal-setting and planning, prioritization, and many more, which I would love to share with you in more detail in other videos. Just subscribe so you won't miss them. In the next episode, you will learn about the seventh letter and category of the Swaripsi framework, namely the spiritual goals and habits. Thank you for watching. And remember, enjoy your day, get wiser, and help us spread the words of wisdom by liking, sharing, and subscribing.